Israel's war on terrorist group Hamas enters its 11th day. A lot of words are flying around about war and the ugly reality of it, with all sides blaming each other. Phrases like war crimes are being thrown around by activist groups. But what exactly constitutes a war crime? Uh, here to help us understand it in more detail is Eugene Kontrovich, uh, a law professor at George Mason University. Thanks for being here. Uh, uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, let's uh, cut straight to the chase. When Hamas invaded Israel 10 days ago and uh, committed those quite clear, grotesque atrocities, they were war crimes, weren't they? To behead babies, execute civilians on their doorstep, cut down 260 kids at a pop concert in a hail of bu bullets, those are war crimes. Yeah, they're not just war crimes, uh, which are because it, this is beyond what anyone contemplates happening in war. They also constitute the crime of genocide and crimes against humanity, quite clearly. What Hamas is continuing to do by keeping the captives, by not allowing access to them, uh, by you know using videos of them as uh, psychological propaganda, also constitute clear war crimes. Mm. Yes, indeed. Uh, in terms of Israel, uh, I mean, uh, yes, clearly, uh, what happened 10 days ago, what Hamas did uh, crossed the line in the most egregious way in many ways. Uh, as you say, it's not just war crimes. These are ge That's genocide, that's massacre of the innocents, a dreadful, dreadful saga. Uh, now, Israel, unsurprisingly, uh, has, uh, Eugene, has responded extremely strongly so far with a bombing barrage. Uh, but in terms of blocking off that country, uh, which is what they've done. They've uh, cut off the water, they've cut off the electricity, they've cut off food supplies. Now, that's being classified as collective punishment, where, whereby the population of a country, if you like, is punished uh, for the sins of its government. And that, I gather, uh, is a war crime. Uh, would it be possible that... Israel could have committed a war crime here, or is that a just, or what is what they've done a justified response? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, what Israel has done is declare a state of siege, which is when you say we are not going to provide access to material to our enemy, and that is entirely legal under the laws of war. Both the U.S. Uh, Defense Department and the U.K. Law of War manuals make clear that siege is a legitimate common uh, and humane <clears throat> tactic in the law of war. But I wouldn't just make a factual correction. Israel has not cut off Gaza's water supply. Gaza has its own water supply. They have desalinization plants. They have an aquifer. However, Israel was also giving some additional water to uh, Gaza, um, which they never paid for. Israel simply cut off the 10% that it was supplying to Gaza. It cut the electricity that it itself was supplying to Gaza. Never in the history of warfare has there been a precedent that a country is supposed to actually keep the power on for its enemy. Now, unfortunately, in war, civilians uh, often suffer. It's, it's hard to find a war uh, uh, when it's fought in a country's territory that does not involve civilian punishment, uh, civilian suffering. That is not collective punishment, right? That would mean that when uh, Britain fought uh, World War II or the Iraq War or the campaign against ISIS, that was collective punishment because civilians suffer. It's kind of like saying that it's collective punishment if you put someone in jail for a crime because now their children don't have a, a breadwinner. Uh, war has side effects and they're very tragic. But what determines whether it's collective punishment is whether the uh, actions are aimed at the civilian population, and they are not. Israel only strikes military targets. It is seeking only to deny supplies to Hamas. But we know, of course, Hamas will also take supplies from civilians. We just saw the other day, the uh, United Nations Relief Works Agency tweeted that Hamas had stole uh, a huge amount of fuel from them before they deleted the tweet and said it was a mistake. Uh, so there is no collective punishment here and there's no war crime. Uh, and in fa fa fairness to Mr Netanyahu, uh, he has been persuaded by the Americans uh, to uh, supply the Israeli water to Gaza again anyway. So that's a sort of slight thawing uh, 
uh, in relations there. Uh, so what you're saying, Eugene, is uh, when, and this is what Israel is being accused of, when people are accusing Israel of war crimes right now for this blockade, that's not legally correct, not legally justified. That, yes, it's not just me saying so. Several uh, professors at West Point, the American Military Academy, have written that this is a legitimate tactic. This is something the United States would do. Uh, and indeed, uh, cutting off supplies is uh, considered sometimes actually a, a more humane uh, tactic than launching uh, immediately a ground invasion, which is also costly in civilian lives. As a matter of fact, there's actually no way to fight a war in an urban context without, unfortunately, incidental civilian casualties. Hamas knows that, and what they do is illegally locate their positions amongst civilians trying to maximize civilian casualties exactly to uh, turn international sympathy against Israel. It's illegal that they do it, but also under the laws of war, under uh, the International Committee of the Red Cross, clearly makes clear that locating military targets amongst civilians does not immunize those military targets from being attacked. In other words, you're not rewarded for using human shields. That would only encourage the use of human shields. Indeed. Now, uh, last night, of course, uh, the ante was up to uh, tragically and seriously uh, with that uh, bomb strike on uh, the Gaza hospital uh, where 500 people died, including many children. 6,000 Gazans uh, were sheltering there just to keep away from danger because they thought if they're in a hospital, they're safe. But uh, they were not, as we now know. Now, uh, there are lots of stories about what could have happened here. Uh, it could have been a terrorist bomb uh, missile uh, that misfired. It could have been a terrorist missile that was deliberately fired at that hospital in order to destroy any uh, hope of peace, which is what Hamas want. They don't want peace, and nor do the even worse terrorist organization, Islamic Jihad. They're the ones who, uh, we're told, uh, press the button on this uh, uh, missile. Uh, but then again, there's the other theory that it was indeed uh, the Israelis as part of their bombing campaign, their blitzing of Gaza. Whoever is responsible for this, uh, again, I suppose this is pretty obvious, Eugene, but that's a war crime, isn't it? Bombing a hospital with children and women in there? I want to disagree with several of your premises. First of all, I don't think this is an issue that is open to speculation. It's not a who knows who did it now. Uh, Israel has released footage from multiple angles of a missile launched from Gaza falling upon this hospital. And we know that you know a third or more of Hamas missiles fall short and hit their own civilian population. President Biden, just in the past hour in Israel, said he reviewed the evidence and he understands that this was Hamas uh, killing their own civilians, making Hamas guilty of perhaps the largest massacre of Palestinians uh, in history. So this was not uh, maybe this, maybe that. The, uh, Israel released recording, actually, of the Hamas operatives uh, or the Islamic Jihad operatives who were shooting these missiles, saying, oh, wow, we missed, we hit the hospital. Um, it's quite clear they hit their own hospital. Uh, and it may also be further the case that there were so many, ex the explosion was so big because of weapons stored in uh, stored in the hospital. So um, what, on the other hand, is it a war crime? So accidentally hitting a hospital is not a war crime. Uh, mistakes happen in war, and it's just a, a tragedy. What would be a war crime is if Hamas was using that hospital to store uh, explosive materials and weaponry, which may have contributed to the scale of the explosion. That would be a war crime, a failure to differentiate distinguish between military targets and civilian targets. And we know that Hamas's headquarters is in the basement of, a, of another uh, hospital. And I just want to say one other thing. You said 500 people were killed. Uh, we, I don't think we have any idea how many people were killed. Uh, you know, within minutes after the hospital being hit, Hamas announced that Israel blew up a hospital, which is not true, and the 500 people were killed. So we have no reason to believe the second part either. Uh, you know, it takes time to count 500 bodies. And um, yeah. I think we actually have no reliable information on how many people, if any, were killed in that tragic attack uh, by the Palestinians on their own hospital. Yeah, agreed. Don't get me wrong. I'm just uh, quoting to you all the various reports uh, that the, pa the, the papers are full of here. Uh, and uh, my uh, fear is, uh, you know, as I've been saying all morning, 
you know, you think about Hamas, there are terrorist groups in Gaza that make Hamas look like moderates. And one of them is uh, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad group. And I would not put it past them uh, to deliberately fire on their own people in order to uh, destabilize any efforts of peace. And bearing in mind that Joe Biden was on his way at the time and is now there. So it has left Joe Biden with this tragedy at the hospital has left Joe Biden with a mountain to climb, and that would feed into exactly what uh, Islamic Jihad and indeed Hamas wanted. Exactly. exactly. For Hamas, it's win-win. If they kill Israeli civilians, that's good for them. And if they fail and they just kill their own civilians, that's also good. Uh, so that is the horrible thing about the tactics that they're using. And in fact, much, uh, many... Uh, media outlets, the New York Times, many politicians, progressive politicians, immediately announced on social media, Israel is guilty of this horrible massacre. And even though it, that has now been refuted, uh, you know that information is out there, uh, and that continues to poison people's minds uh, against Israel. Hopefully, this will be a lesson to people not to believe the first thing they hear, especially from the Hamas health ministry, which is just another branch of Hamas. Uh, Eugene Kantorovich, uh, excellent to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. Great. Thank you so much for having me on.